Yeah, we will listen. I'm going to pause. Oh. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> OK, so we just restarted, um, but I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dominic now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Dominic Flores. I'm a business banking relationship manager with Wapet Bank. I'm currently in my fourth year with the bank, but I have 22 years of experience in financial services. Um, those spread along uh, insurance lines, commercial insurance, uh, real estate. I was a real estate agent for several years as well. And uh, where I found myself in business banking, I found an a, a occupation that I think suits all of my uh, skill set, and I really love it, uh, brings life to me. So I'm really excited and passionate about sharing information with businesses on how to grow, how to establish uh, success in the marketplace, and how to access funds, capital, financing for being able to increase their uh, their business, to grow their business. And so I'm excited about that. Uh, currently, what I deal with is business lending primarily, but I also manage treasury servicing. I'll go help, uh, help businesses with merchant services uh, along with uh, account servicing. So it is an area of passion for me, an uh, area that I'm very uh, informed about, and, and I'm happy to be a part of this workshop to explain the ways that I can better benefit your business or at least provide instruction on how to grow. Um, I, I feel like uh, this is a great organization, and I'm happy to be a part of this workshop. Thank you, Dominic. Can you tell us, um, you know, I as a, like, say I'm a new business owner, and I'm walking into your office to talk about small business lending, what would be, uh, you know, what would you tell me? What would be the process that I would need to go through? And what would be important for me to know um, before I even walk in your business? what I need to bring with me, um, those types of things. Yeah, that's a good question. And I feel like most businesses don't um, have those type of questions ready when they come and talk to me. They really don't know. They know their craft. They know um, how to do their business. Like if they're a, a bakery, they know how to bake. If they're a contractor, they know how to build, right? There's things that they know how to do. But when it comes to the borrowing side of things, the business, the administrative side of business, uh, sometimes they're at a loss and they don't know what to do. So I, I appreciate that question really well. Um, the important thing to understand about banking is that uh, my role is to help you achieve financial success in the workplace. And so there are tools that I can offer to you and understanding about the concepts with regards to how to obtain financing that may be foreign to you. And so I would say primarily having a relationship with a, a dedicated business banker is key in your in starting and again i can help you with educating on, on what type of documentation you would need for a loan i can help you with uh, understanding uh who to talk to as far as like an accountant to get certain financial documents prepared again that's going to be really important right off the bat but uh the thing that i generally spend the most time talking to business about is um, the way that we help you achieve financial success is by helping you understand how to leverage a bank's money to grow your business organically, because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, companies that are kind of stagnant, right? They haven't grown and they don't know how to grow because they're used to taking money that they have and funneling back in the business. Now, if you have access to outside capital that would help you, for example, to hire an employee, one more employee that would potentially grow your business or, or give you more capacity to serve a greater clientele. Um, perhaps you need a little bit extra money to buy the type of inventory that you need to keep up with demand or equipment that's required to provide the best possible service to your clients. Uh, those things are all important. Overall, it helps you to increase your cash flow. And that's what I want to talk about in at large today, you know, as we continue in this conversation. But I would say that new clients, when they come in and they sit down and talk to me, the first thing I want to get out of them is what is your goal? What is the dream? What's the big picture? Because if we can get people thinking about the big picture, then we can figure out what steps are necessary to help them put themselves in position to get there. And a lot of businesses have big dreams. And then they come to a place where they're maybe a little bit financially stable in order to maybe buy the building that they've always uh, wanted to get. Uh, and then they realize in that moment that most banks are going to require 25% down payment. So just a simple example, if they find a $400,000 building and they, they want to go and purchase it and they talk to me, uh, I'm going to tell them right off the bat, well, you're going to have to come in with $100,000 plus your your loan origination fee, your appraisal costs, and third-party fees. And so um, this type of question is really deflating. This type of response is really deflating to a lot of businesses who think it's more similar to like buying a house, where sometimes you, you don't have to come out with 
hardly anything out of pocket. It, you know, if you get certain types of loans, um, it's very different in the business world. And so to answer your question succinctly, I would say that having a dedicated business banker like myself would help to prepare you early on in the process as you're getting established to uh, get, put yourself in the position later on down the road to be able to get into a building or to expand, expand your business because you've already done the steps that are that perhaps you didn't know about that I would instruct you on to get yourself into that place. Does that make sense? Yes. What if I'm a brand new business and sure. I'm coming to you and I don't I have no cash flow. I just I want to start. I have a passion and I I see this building downtown and I I know that I want to start a business there, but I've never started a business and I only have my house and my car and my husband has a full-time job, but this is something that I really want to do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh banking is like insurance in the sense that it's all risk-based. Uh, something to be aware of, 50% of new businesses fail within the first five years of business, okay? And it's because of a lot of the structural side of it, it's understanding finances. It's, it's the fact that some people are fantastic at their craft, but not very good administratively. They're not necessarily good at managing employees or inventory or market risk or industry risk. They don't really have a clue whether, you know, they're setting up shop next to, you know, in, in a very highly competitive area where they might be set up for a difficult time in business. And so it's really important to understand that from a bank's perspective, it's a very risky business to provide financing to startups. Okay. Now, with that being said, there are certain things that you can do to position yourself. So most banks would allow a business credit card to, to be provided to someone who's a startup business. My bank does the same thing. We have something called a community banking credit card. Now it is a consumer card, so it's based off of your individual credit score, but it has your business name on it and it will help you to develop credit uh, with your business name on it, similar to like trade payables that you might have with a, a company that provides you, um, if you're a manufacturer, for example, someone who provides wood or uh, natural resources for you. Uh, so that's similar. Um, and, and so again, that is an option, but there's also other means to capital that you should know about as well. Um, one of those means is that there are non-depository institutions that uh, offer loans to startup businesses, okay? Now, these institutions, and, and I have a couple that I utilize regularly, these institutions are, uh, they will charge you a higher interest rate uh, because the risk is clearly higher if you're starting out in business, but they keep in contact with um, banks such as myself if I refer them over. And so once that client is then credit worthy, for example, they have two years in businesses, or in business rather that banks typically require, or they've, meet, they've met other credit criteria that we look for, then that institution passes the business back to us. And then we're able to refinance your debt for, with a better rate, right? And better terms. So that's another option. Um, there's also other things you could do. For example, if you're a small ag company, if you're a small farmer, uh, you know, the USDA is an option for you. There's financing available through the SDA for, for new startups in that arena as well. Um, the SBA has some lending options as well. Typically, they want to see two years in business as well. Um, but sometimes uh, one of the types of loans that they do is a 7A loan, which is, uh, you know, for re um, recurring income, revolving income. Uh, th there are some options there. If you can't obtain financing with other means, uh, there is a, a resource that they can potentially work with you on. So, again, um, there are answers uh, to, you know, what uh, can startups do when it comes to financing. It's just important to be able to have the conversation and know instead of perhaps being overwhelmed with all the information out there, I can direct you in the right uh, steps to put yourself in a position to get the loan. So you uh, made a comment about two years mm -hmm. of being a business, yeah. but that there's some other things that banks look at. What do they look, what are some of those things that they look at that could be used in place of that two years business experience? Right. So we want to see industry experience. Industry experience is extremely important. So uh, generally speaking, the two-year rule has to do with being able to look at your financials, right? We base our decisions on risk, but we also base our decisions on the cash flow for your company, right? So we want to see excess cash flow. Uh, to put it uh, clearly, we want to see that your total income exceeds your total debt by a margin of 25%. Okay, this shows us that you can service new debt. Um, you can pay your payments on new debt without being overwhelmed. Um, some people have this understanding or belief that if they provide us 
information that shows what they might earn. So we call it in the industry income, right? <laughs> it's not actually income, it's income. Um, and they have this idea, like, if I do this, then I'll earn this. Um, we cannot use that. Now, certain types of lending does utilize that. Commercial real estate lending uses pro formas, which are, you know, income mm -hmm. and, and it can be utilized. Um, but when it comes to just small business banking, it's not typical. And so it's important to understand that we need to see your cash flow. We need to see your tax returns, your, you know, income statements, your balance sheet to, to look at your total strength of your business, right? And, and so that's going to be a, a really important factor in the conversation we're also looking at what are known as the five C's of credit, right? The five C's of credit are uh, character. Now, now, a lot of businesses don't really think about it in this term, but when we talk about like credit scores, we're actually talking about character, right? Apart from extenuating circumstances for businesses um, where they can't pay debts because of illnesses or death in the families or things like that, um, people that don't pay their, their bills on time um, statistically are higher risk. And it also means to us that if they have debts, like with us, for example, they may not pay us. So character is extremely important to us. Um, when we have bigger loans, we even interview your uh, creditors. We interview businesses in the area to talk about the reputation for a business. A lot of businesses don't know that, but it's true. We want to understand the character of a business to be able to know whether it's something that we want to lend, uh, to lend on. We've also found that even if on paper, the business uh, is making a lot of money. If there's areas of character that are questionable, it may not be a good fit for us. So the, the next thing would be capacity. So the next C is capacity. And that has to do with your cash flow. Does the business have the capacity to repay on debt? And again, we're going to look at the numbers. We're going to, the numbers are going to tell us the story of whether you're making sufficient money to be able to cover your existing debts and any future debt that you want to bring on. So the next question after someone comes to me and says, I'd like to buy a commercial building, you know, after we determine what their credit score might be and that they can pay the down payment is, what does your cash flow look like? And I would do a cash flow analysis for that client, looking at their credit information, looking at their tax returns and such to determine whether they have the sufficient cash flow to meet their debt service needs, okay? Um, and so that's really important. The next one is capital. Capital has to do with the liquidity of the business, which is to say how much cash on hand the business has, how much cash has been invested by the, by the borrower into his business or by the owner into the business, right? We want to see that businesses or that you know, owners have skin in the game, so to speak, right? Um, when we do a loan, we're, we're coming in with 75% of the risk on a building, for example, 75% of the risk. Uh, the borrower or the owner has 25% of the risk, right? So we take a majority of the risk. We want to see that the owners are also investing, right? It's not just, we'll let the bank take care of everything. For us, we need to see that, as I mentioned, skin in the game on their end. And so that's why um, uh, capital is so important. The next thing is conditions, right? Um, businesses have life cycles, okay? You have, you go from your growth stage to a mature, uh, to a, um, from startup to growth to mature, right, to declining. Those are the state the life cycles of a business. And so we want to understand what the condition of the business is. Um, you know, when we're talking about lending, we want to make sure that we understand properly where you're at in that cycle so we can see what the actual need is. Um, the other things that you need to consider with conditions would have to be things like the market risk, right, what the market looks like at the time, right? We've gone through, uh, you know, you know, some have said a recession even recently. We've seen the market go down because of COVID. There's all these external things that can happen. So market, con market conditions are important. Industry conditions, some industries are very high risk and, and it's important to note. Um, and so that's something that we need to consider. And the last one would be the collateral. The last C would be the collateral. And that is what you are utilizing to secure the loan, right? We're going to look for uh, first, second, third, ways of repayment on a loan, right? The first might be cash flow from the business. Um, the second might be liquidation of assets, right? Um, or, or it could be, you know, we look at what your current assets are to see, okay, if you can't pay because your business isn't making money, how can we secure uh, the, the loan for future needs? You know, if something were to happen, we had to recover it, how would we recover it? So those are important things. I know that's a lot. And um, maybe someone might have to listen to this a couple of times to kind of understand those things, but that's what we look for. 
one of the things that you mentioned was, you know, you talked about credit and in conversations that we've had before, um, people might not understand the difference between personal credit and business credit and why, why that is important to know what those differences are. Yeah, absolutely. So in the same way that um, individuals have credit scores, um, businesses also have credit scores. And so when I'm looking at a business to determine whether that business gets a loan, I'm going to look to see whether that business has any credit. Now, businesses establish credit through similar means. They have credit cards, they have business loans, um, they have uh, trade payables, which are agreements, again, with um, third-party businesses where you know they are giving them uh, product and they don't have to repay them back for a certain amount of time, right? There's a certain time frame that they can pay them back. And, and so we look to those things to determine whether the business has credit. So um, an individual credit score is important. And, and we can talk about this later, the personal guarantees that an individual might make uh, towards a business loan, right? Uh, some are under the impression that they can just get a loan under their business name, but 90% of the time, the banks are going to require a personal guarantee by the owner as well. And again, we can get into that, but the business credit score is going to be really clear for us because it isn't just uh, an issue of whether the business repays their debt. The, the business credit score is comprised of other factors as well, things that we've discussed already, such as the type of industry that the business is in, perhaps it's a high risk industry, um, the length of time that a business has been uh, in business, right? So the, the more time that you're in business, it shows us that you're able to navigate the ups and downs of business, that you're able to manage your business well and that you're actually doing well. So those are that's an important thing. And so, and so we have uh, the industry risk, we have the, uh, the length of time in business, and we have the, uh, the credit that you've established through different creditors. Uh, and those things will help us to be secure in knowing that your business can weather storms, right? That's when it comes down to the risk factor. We mm -hmm. want to see that you can weather the ups and downs of business and the cycle of business. And so again, that's the distinction between commercial credit scores and individual credit scores. And it's very important for us to look at both sides. And when you were talking about, um, you know, having um, assets, um, I sat on the North Central Washington Business Loan Fund uh, Board and Credit Committee. And one of the things um, that we did, we were a non-traditional lending institution. We were a bank. We we were able to look at uh, people with maybe higher um, risk, a lot higher risk, and the interest rates reflected that. Um, but we also were able to look at assets a little bit differently um, and take different. So what, as a traditional bank, what type of assets can you look at when somebody comes in to, for a loan to um, help um, secure. secure the loan? Yes, yeah, yes. for sure. That's a good question. Um, we look at primarily for businesses, um, business assets. So business assets would be current assets. So, or it could be fixed assets. Okay, so so when we're talking about a commercial line of credit, for example, right? A line of credit um, can be secured in many different ways. So one of the more common things that we do is we place what's known as a uniform commercial code filing or UCC1 filing on their business assets. So it's essentially a blanket lien that goes over all of their business assets. So should they default on the loan, we'll have the recourse of going after and taking, you know, not that we would want to do this, but taking business assets and then trying to recover them through the sale of those assets. So we file this lien with the state. And, and so um, we require a business balance sheet that'll show us what type of uh, assets that they have and whether they're qualifying assets. So that's one way to do it. We can also, um, we can also secure lines of credit with cash. So some businesses, they they don't, you know, let's say you're a professional services business, right? So you're a dentist or uh, an attorney, let's say an attorney, um, they don't necessarily have hundreds of thousands of dollars in computer equipment and desks, right? And so how would they necessarily secure it? So one of the ways that we do that is that if they have cash on hand, we can secure it with a CD. So they could put it in a certificate of deposit with a bank, right? With us, for example, and 100,000, 200,000, and then we would secure it based on the term of the CD. And, and so that's a, a fantastic way because CDs are making a lot of money right now. Um, and so if they could put money in a CD, earn interest on that. And at the same time, that's the collateral that we use for the line of credit. It's a very actually reasonable thing to do. And then, you know, if it's a short term, so you're not, your, your funds aren't tied up for a, a long period of time. Um, we also use single family residences or secondary residences as collateral for lines of credit. 
So this is important for businesses to know as well. If you don't necessarily have the collateral that we're looking for, but you need a bigger uh, line, uh, we can be second lien position on a house. So if you have a sufficient equity in the house or if it's free and clear, we can be second lien position and we can secure the line of credit with a single family house or a secondary residence. And then we have the commercial real estate piece. So if you have a commercial building and you want to secure either the a commercial real estate loan or a line of credit, you can use a commercial building to do that. So those are primary ways to do it. There's other ways we can use inventory for a business. We can use accounts receivable for a business. Uh, we limit those to a certain percentage of your total amount um, so as to not put the all the eggs in one basket, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, but these are the types of conversations that um, we get to once we are able to evaluate financials, like the balance sheet, for example, of a business, because then we can see where their assets lie and what might be the best method of securing the loan. So many of the small businesses that we work with um, out here in Okanagan County, um, many don't use QuickBooks. Um, a lot of them are doing, you know, utilizing Excel or some just basic programs. Um, when they come to you and um, want to talk to you about a loan, um, are those sufficient for you or do you need them to be more formalized? Um, what is the expectation of documentation of a business when they come to you to be able to evaluate? Yeah, that's really important. The most unreliable form of financials are company prepared financials. And so whether it's an Excel or, you know, you have another program that you use, um, they're, they're not as reliable. And so not that we take that information with a grain of salt, but then we really look to the tax returns to be able to show us what the financials really look like. Um, now, if you're getting company, uh, if you're getting um, accountant prepared financials, audited financials, those tell us a different story because you know they're going to align fairly well with the tax returns. Mm -hmm. And so again, those are going to be pretty reliable. The answer to your question, though, is, you know, on a small business loan, if you've prepared a profit and loss statement through Excel, if you've prepared a balance sheet through Excel, typically we'll utilize those because it'll give us an idea about um, what it is, the position of the business. Now, I'm happy in those circumstances to help with um, helping provide clarity on what it is that we're looking for. And, and so as a business, and I've done this before, as a business is, you know, look, it doesn't have profit and loss statements or balance sheets, for example. I will explain to them what it is that um, we're looking for, what the what those financial documents help to uh, illustrate to a bank. And so it gives them context, you know, and so as they're filling it out, they're understanding a little bit more about what it is that we're looking for and what really they should be inputting in that in those different spaces within that form. One of the um, challenges we we have, we deal with a lot of small businesses here in Okanagan County. And one of the challenges that we ran into um, when we're talking to businesses is that um, over the years, I mean, especially some who have recently started up and they're coming to us and saying, we need to find a loan, you know, we need to buy this equipment or we'd like to move into this building. Um, but I can't get a loan because, you know, all my income tax shows a loss. Because um, I was told from the beginning that I should write everything off so that I don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> uh, how, when, when we see businesses like this, we tell them, no, you know, if you ever want anything or you ever want to buy, or, you know, something and you need to get a loan, showing a loss is not going to help you get a loan. Um, what do you tell these businesses when they come to you wanting and they bring you their tax returns and they're showing that they're not making any money, but they're telling you, I really did make money, but <laughs> yeah, how do you respond to that? Sure, sure. And that's very typical. It's very common. And the reason is because, you know, if, um, you almost define a good accountant by someone who helps you not to pay taxes, right? Because <laughs> we don't want people to want to pay taxes. And um uh, here's what I would say to you is um, one of the things that you want to think about is you want to be forward thinking, you want to think about a plan that you have for the future, right? And this is very critical because when you have a conversation with your accountant and your accountant says, what's your objective here? And you start with, I want to buy a building in two to three years, help me get there. Then they're not looking necessarily to write off, you know, the, the dog that you might use as your advertising material, right? They're looking to demonstrate to a bank that there is sufficient cash flow in the business, right? And um, and not just that's not to say that accountants are doing anything that's underhanded. It's right. just that their their objective is to help you to not have to pay taxes. But sometimes it's necessary to bite the bullet 
when it comes to uh, your taxes and pay the taxes so that banks can see that, in fact, you are making money, right? And the bottom line is that we're going to look at your gross revenues. We're going to look at your net income. And then whatever you have left over is, is what is going to be your, your cash flow, essentially. Now, there's other parts to that. And, and here's one other thing that I would say. When it comes to business banking, uh, especially within the small banking community, small business banking community, we use what's known as global cash flow. A global cash flow differs from the business cash flow because we use not just your business income and debts, but we also use personal income and debts. All right. And so it gives us a global debt service ratio. Okay. Debt service ratio is similar to debt to income that most people are familiar with, right? There's a little bit of nuance to it, but here's how it's important to typical businesses. Now your business may show that uh, things are getting written off, but you're not showing a loss necessarily. Let's just say you break even on your business tax returns on your 1040, on your schedule C, you see that you're just breaking even essentially. Um, but let's say you have other income personal income, you own rental homes and you're getting income from that. You have retirement accounts, you have pensions, you have other streams of income uh, that you're earning money on. So what we'll do is we'll look at your personal cash flow, your personal debts, and then your personal income. And that will help to supplement uh, income on the business side as well. And so again, we use those combined to, to look at the global cash flow. So it's just important to note that we're advocates for our clients like I we would explain this and help them to kind of get to that place and we're not just going to shut people down but one thing I would say as a rule of thumb is that banks can only go off of what we see on paper and that is the key uh, to finding you know to, to mention to your accountant as well when it comes to getting a loan is that if on paper you show a loss regardless of the explanation for the loss um, it's not going to look favorable to you um, for a bank who's looked, who's concerned with risk, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's things that we can look at, such as depreciation and capital gains taxes and interest income and stuff, and we can add certain things back. Um, but again, a loss is a loss in the eyes of underwriters. So. I think that that's really, really important. And it's something that um, I know that we've really started stressing the businesses because um, believe me, we have a lot of frustrated people who come in and say, I just need a $10,000 loan and I, I can't even get that $10,000 that I need to buy this piece of equipment because I've shown a loss on my tax returns or I, I don't have that personal guarantee. Um, one of the things that we've talked about in the past too is about the business credit cards. And I know that you touched a little bit on it, but how is that important for a business and how can that help? you know, maybe somebody who's getting started and who maybe just needs a very small amount of money. Um, do you, would you uh, have that person, I mean, if somebody came in and talked to you, they need $15,000, $20,000 to get started, would you do, would you refer them to like a personal loan, a business credit card, or is there a business loan that's that small that you guys would be able to offer? Yeah, I mean, we do lines of credit starting at like $5,000. And some some products don't require financials. So business lines of credit, for example, um, under 10000 with Wapet Bank don't require financials. So you don't have to provide tax returns or income statements or, or anything like that. And it's based primarily on your credit score. Okay. And so that's an option. Your uh, a credit card for our, our community banking card that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Um, we don't require financials for um, any of the credit cards that we're doing. Um, we have different tiers of credit cards. So our commercial card, it's a, it's a Visa signature card, right? And it is um, up to $30,000 you are not required to provide financials for. It. Okay, so not to say that, you know, the questions are going to come up about whether the business has had a loss or not, right? And so that needs to be answered and determined, but, and kind of understand the trend for the business. But again, we're not going to be asking for the financials for the smaller loans. And so that's helpful to businesses who either aren't prepared necessarily with the financials or just would rather have some sort of loan without having to jump through all the hoops, right? And go through the process of underwriting in the same exact way. So um, the other thing I would say is that, um, you know, as I mentioned, the community banking card, you can get up to $15,000 of a line of credit if you're within your first year, if you're like a year and a half or after 12 months and you can get up to 30,000, that's useful to have. Um, there's other institutions that I mentioned though as well that can do startup loans. And, um, and again, I work with them on a regular basis. And so um, I, what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna be an asset 
whether or not people bank with me, you know, it's important. I want to earn deposit relationships. I want to earn loan relationships, but I really want to educate people as well. And so if, you know, someone who's watching this uh, said, you know, I have some follow-up questions, maybe they didn't get answered. Um, and they want to talk about strategy, about how to put themselves in a position or who might be able to help them. I'd love to have that conversation. I'd love to be able to help them get to a place where they feel confident because I know it'll pay dividends down the road as well. Perhaps they recall how I helped them in the beginning and maybe we earn a relationship down the road. And so it is important for me to educate people. But um, again, to answer your question, yes, small business credit cards are really key for businesses to develop the business credit that they need to get initially, right? to, develop, to develop the individual credit that they need to get there. And, and that's going to be important for them. Again, baby steps. I know I talk to a lot of businesses, they just want to like come out the gate and they just want to kill it. Right. And they, and they have all these dreams and, um, and that's great. It's good to have the drive. Um, but the reality is, is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, 50% of businesses fail within the first five years and banks have to take, have to understand that risk. And so it's going to be something a little bit hard. And if you do get a loan, you're going to be paying a little bit more interest up front. And, and again, there's other means to get loans like hard money lenders and, and uh, you know, the different things that we've talked about already, you know, institutions that are non-depository that might offer loans or non-traditional financing. Schemes. So how is it, how, if there's a business on here that's looking, I mean, every day on the internet, you know, we get all these different, you know, things that pop up about small business lending. How do you know, how, how should somebody know whether or not those are real? You know, um, because I think that there's so many predatory people like like businesses or, or lending institutions that are out there that are trying to get that that small business or that person who's like, oh, I could use another ten thousand dollars for my business. And wow, this just popped up on Facebook because it heard me talking about it the other day. And all of a sudden you start getting these ads for these different um, loan programs that are out there. Um, how, how would a person, um, small business out here in Okanagan County or in this region, how would they know what one is real and what one is not? Sure. Yeah. You know, that's a good question. And, and you would say that, you know, perhaps discernment isn't necessary for some of those things, but some people don't have context for that type of thing. Uh, I think talking to, you know, established businesses, Wapet, for example, has been around over 100 years, mm -hmm. and um, we've been established. We're the largest Washington-based bank. We've won the last three years in a row, Best Big Bank by Newsweek Magazine and Money.com. And so those are things you could look up about a business. So whether it's Wapet or whether it's another institution, you could look information up about them. And then again, you have a face-to-face -face relationship as well. You know, we have a presence here uh, in Olmec, rather. We have, a, we have a presence there where, you know, you can always go in and sit down and talk with someone face-to-face. -face. So I feel like that's important. But also, um, you know, I, I always tell people to do their due diligence. You know, if you see something that looks too good to be true, it's probably too good mm -hmm. to be true. Um, and, and here's the other thing is that there's a lot of conditions or interest rates that could be super high. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that high. We see it quite a bit in like a used car lots mm -hmm. where, you know, someone gets a car and they're super excited about it. And then someone tells them you have 24% interest. Like, why would you do that? Right. Um, and then again, they're just excited to get the car, right? And a lot of businesses- It's immediate gratification. It's immediate gratification, <laughs> right, to, to their own detriment. And, yeah. that, um, and so it's just, I think it's about, it's about um, a company's reputation that you can look up, right? You can see reviews, you can, you can do that. You can talk to people that you trust, right? That's really important as well. People who've maybe gone before you have a little bit more experience or, you know, uh, your organization, the Economic mm -hmm. Alliance, is, you know, that's what you do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed you have, uh, you know, the SBDC as well, which is a fantastic organization that helps businesses understanding how to navigate business, especially startups, but also any businesses. I think you guys saw SCORE out there as well. So there's all these different opportunities that they have to come to a source where they can get information that they can rely on. So that's what I would say. Don't necessarily look to one source. Uh, talk to different people who have the experience and the reputation. Yes, that we we've had several businesses who were like, well, we got on and we applied and they told us we did that again. Yes, 20% interest. And it's just like, oh, don't, don't apply, don't yeah. click on those links because they don't realize it. And all they could think about was, oh, I could use another ten thousand dollars today to help my business. I could buy these this inventory that I wanted to have in my storefront, but they again they don't realize that interest rate and um, and how, you know, if they really calculated it out, you know, that $10,000, now they're paid $50,000, you know, and, and that's what could you have done with that other $40,000 that you had to pay for interest? Um, a 
couple of other things I just wanted to just touch base on um, was, you know, when somebody applies for a loan, you know, I know that we've kind of went over this a little bit, um, but I personally, my husband and I own several different businesses and we, uh, a couple of years ago, we were like, okay, well, is this, you know, the bank came back to us and it was like, okay, well, this is in, you know, this is, we were going for a business loan, but then it came out and it was in my husband and my name. And we're like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be in the business. So what is the difference um, when you're applying for a business loan? Is it in the business's name or is it in the individual's names yeah. that own the business? Right. So I'm glad you brought that up. And I did mention that earlier that we would talk about that in a little more detail. Um, virtually all business loans are in, are personally guaranteed. Okay. And that just needs to be something that is just known. Um, there are times where it's not required. So a nonprofit organization, for example, where there are no owners, right? There, there's no personal guarantees required for a nonprofit. Okay. And, and that's important. So we just go off the business financials and the business credit. Um, but all for-profit businesses, um, I would say, for, again, over 90% of them are going to need a personal guarantee. Okay, and the personal guarantee is security for the bank so that if for some reason the business defaults on the loan, they have recourse to be able to recover some of their losses through the owners as well. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that they don't prefer that, that they um, it doesn't seem right because the business is the one taking the loan. Why are they personally responsible for it? Um, but pragmatically to the bank, it it's just a risk issue. Again, it's, it's, we understand that, you know, businesses fail and we understand that um, we need to look at all of our options. We need to see secondary and tertiary forms of repayment that are available to us. And we find those through personal guarantees. Now, if you're a business that, you know, have some tremendous amount of liquidity, tremendous amount of cash flow, we can potentially waive that requirement, but most businesses aren't in that place. Most businesses will be required to do a personal guarantee on their loans. And so when you sign your loan documents, you have your business that signs and agrees. And then you have your, as an individual, you agreeing as well to be personally liable for the loan. Now, you may be adverse to that, right? You may not want that to be true, um, but you might consider it a necessary evil when it comes to business lending, because the benefits of having a business loan tremendously outweigh the risk, especially if you have no intention of defaulting on the loan, which most businesses don't have that, right? Um, you get into the position where you're making a lot of money and it, it just doesn't, um, utilizing the line of credit, utilizing the business loan, leveraging the bank's funds, um, it, it helps to settle that um, because you're not you're not concerned necessarily with defaulting on the loan or affecting your personal credit score. And I think that's what people's, mo their fear mostly lies in. Like, I don't want my personal score to be affected by this. Well, it wouldn't be obviously if you made your payments on your loan. Right. So. It could actually benefit it. It would, yeah. So then to clarify on the, uh, that question, those business loans, if I went to buy a personal vehicle and they ran my credit, then those, the business loans would also be attached. Not necessarily, no. Oh, okay. No, because we still tie it to your business, especially if you're like an LLC, if you are an organization mm -hmm. um, versus a sole proprietor. If you're a sole proprietor, you might see it on there. But um, again, we're, we're financing businesses. And so the loan will still be in the name of the business um, and with your name attached to it. And so generally speaking, they don't combine on credit reports. Now, there are some circumstances where they do. For example, if you buy a building and it's just in your personal name, right? It's a business loan, but it's just in your personal name, then that'll probably reflect on your personal credit. If you do a, a business loan for a building under your LLC and you're a personal guarantor on that, it'll show up on your business, but not necessarily on your personal credit. Okay. So what are, um, so what you talked about credit cards, you talked about lines of credit. Um, what is the, like, what is the maximum that a business could come in or, or is there a maximum amount of money that somebody could come in and apply for? Um, you know, for instance, if there was a building downtown and we wanted to go in and purchase that building and it was $700,000. Uh, is there, do you guys here locally have a max on what somebody can come in and apply for? We have different 
departments that deal with certain amounts, certain limits. Mm -hmm. um, but as a bank, we could do you know, millions, hundreds of millions. It just depends on the cash flow the, for the business. Is. Yeah. So if, for example, and I do this quite a bit, if you were interested in purchasing a building and you said, hey, I'm interested, what do I need to do? I would ask you for your tax returns and your income statements, your balance sheet. And then I would plug it into a cash flow calculator. And then I'd be able to tell you based on your cash flow how much of a loan you can afford to repay with that 25% buffer that we talked about. Okay, so that's that's really important. So I could tell you right off the bat within like 15 minutes of looking at your returns and your income statements, how much you can qualify for. Um, and so that's, you know, that's pretty important. It's very helpful to businesses, especially early on, right? If you had that conversation now with your people three years down the road, I can tell you this is what we need to see. This is where you're at. This is what you need to do maybe for a little bit different. Right. Okay. Now, when it comes to business lines of credit, that's a little different story because we want to limit your line of credit to 10 to 15% of your total annual revenues. Okay. So if you're making a million dollars a year, we're talking 100,000 to 150,000 max on a line of credit. If you're getting started off, let's say you're making $200,000 a year and you're saying, I need a $100,000 line, uh, line of credit. Probably not going to happen. That's that's helpful. That's extremely helpful. Um, do you help businesses? I know that we've had several businesses who've come in over the years who have filed for bankruptcy, um, who've had bad credit, um, maybe medical bills or student loans that um, they had to defer or uh, do a forbearance on. Um, do you work with those individuals or do you refer them to some of these other non-traditional lending institutions or how would you deal with somebody who's wanting to start a business or who has a business and they want to expand or they want to get a business loan and you know they've just had some challenges in the past but they're on track and they're ready to go to move forward yeah yeah this question and this answer would probably vary based on the institution Wafed is a portfolio lender and what that means is that we don't sell any of our loans to a secondary market so we keep everything in-house okay so whatever we choose to do like for example if i originate a loan I am the lend, I'm the relationship manager from the beginning all the way to the end. I provide all the servicing on the back end as well. And so what, under my portfolio, I'm looking to um, understand the client, understand the circumstances regarding a bankruptcy, for example. So a bankruptcy doesn't necessarily preclude someone from getting a loan if we can explain the specific reasons for it and show different trends. So um, we ask a lot of questions. We want to understand why the bankruptcy. We want to understand what you know what occurred. It was an illness, for example, mm -hmm. and it's we could demonstrate you know what cash flow was like pr prior to the season that that illness took place or surgery, whatever it was, and then the you know what's gone on after that. Um, then then again, that question could, we can be a little bit flexible. Um, and again, if there's other, we look at other metrics as well. Again, that we talked about the five C's of credit. If you have multiple strong legs to stand on, let's say you have good um, liquidity, okay? So your, your cash on hand is pretty substantial and you have, uh, your cash flow is good, but your credit score isn't very good. And there's a reason for that. It was a bankruptcy that you filed. If you have multiple legs that are strong to stand on, then we can potentially make an exception in that scenario. Um, but if you don't, if it's your credit is not strong because of the bankruptcy, you don't have any cash flow and your liquidity is very low, then it's going to be a harder hill to overcome. And so the answer to your question is that it's not a hard no, but it, we definitely will ask the questions to determine what the reasons were around it and how, if possible, we might make an exception. Do you have different uh, rates based upon credit scores or um, that you guys offer at your bank? If somebody comes in and they're 800, they get the gold or platinum rate. And I mean, yeah. it's. Yes, uh, yes and no. I mean, there's certain products that we offer that have a fixed rate, you know, our um, our commercial uh, real estate, you know, there's some flexibility. I can tell you that this is something important. Um, the way that banks lend is through their deposits, right? So banks need core deposits to be able to lend. Otherwise, they have to borrow money uh, to lend money. Okay, and that's not ideal for banks because they don't make as much money, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's important to us to talk to businesses about if you want the best rate that we can offer to you, you have to also engage in the relationship by trusting us with your deposits. Okay, so if you came in and said, I just want a loan, 
um, you, you would get the standard rate. But if you said, hey, I, I'd also like to bring my relationship over with you. I have, you know, say 250000 in this account and I want to bring it over. Then, then we're more willing to look at what that benefit might be and adjust the rate. OK, uh, I know some people kind of resent that notion. Um, but it's just a, it's a numbers game, right? We understand risk. We understand the, um, you know, the relationship for us and how we're going to continue to lend and grow. And it just makes sense logically for us mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Now on lines of credit, um, we do have a margin that we charge. So lines of credit are variable rated. Okay. So that they're tied to, we use the Wall Street Journal prime rate, which fluctuates. It's published daily and mm -hmm. it fluctuates. Um, we charge a margin uh, in addition to the prime rate. Now that margin is dependent on your credit score or other credit criteria, your length in business and all these other things. So um, in that respect, yes, um, two different businesses might get a different margin. That margin becomes fixed and then added to whatever the prime rate is, which does fluctuate subject to change. Um, but two different businesses might receive a different margin based on their experience. Now, did you have any questions that you thought of? No, we went through the whole thing. <laughs> I do have just a, sometimes when you open a business and you're in the, um, uh, and they kind of like blind or things the requirements and you mentioned about merchant equipment and payroll assistance, something that your bank can provide. Will you explain how can they do that? Yeah, so we, we don't offer merchant services or payroll services through our through ourselves, we have a, a relationship, right? Banks typically will do this type of thing where we, we have partnerships with different companies. The Heartland is the company that we currently have relationships with. In the past, we went through Vantive. And so um, different banks will have this uh, partnership. Now there's ad 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 advantages to going through uh, a bank that has a relationship with a merchant services provider. For example, um, with Heartland, you get a five-year price lock on your rate for merchant services, which is really big because the industry is going up like everything else is. So if you can lock your rate in for five years, that is, that is really nice. It's a good feature. Also, payroll services um, that are offered through the Heartland are very robust, very significant. And, and some businesses, they just don't have the time to deal with the employees, the HR that's required for employees, the tax forms and all the things. So um, administratively, it makes sense to pay money to have a payroll service. You don't have to deal with that and you can focus on what is your gift which is your craft and running your business and growing your business some people i think fail to see the value in that and in doing so they spend so much time working on to that end that they um that they're sacrificing profits on the other side right whereas if you were to give that to someone else um who's a professional in that area you can focus on your craft and, and so the answer to your question is yes, uh, banks will typically have relationships, we do, um, with, uh, with Heartland, and they offer a, a very competitive and very strong product um, on both sides of merchant services and payroll. So again, I, I deal with that by proxy because you know, I'll establish relationships and pass it on to our representatives that we work with in the field. So explain a little bit more about those services. So you, yeah. you have somebody that um, you guys contract with that you can refer a business that you're working with to them. They will do like pay their QuickBooks. They'll do all of their HR stuff. Yeah. So on the okay on the merchant services side, which I'll start with, um, it's about um, it's about having a terminal POS system. Mm -hmm. It's about like if you're a retail store uh, or if you're virtual, if you need if you have a website and you want to be able to accept credit cards, um, they can create. Uh, they have software to be able to put that on your website so that you can accept uh, payments mm -hmm. that way um, or, or terminals, right? That you can plug into or a POS system if you're a restaurant to be able to, you know, put in all your menu items and charge people that way. So uh, they offer the merchant services side of it. And then on the payroll side, they have different services that they offer based on the need that you have. So they have a simple payroll uh, thing where they issue payroll checks, they pay payroll taxes, they look for credits, right? Credits that you might not be aware of. For example, one of the credits that they talk a lot about is the Watsi credit, which is a work opportunity tax mm -hmm. credit. A lot of businesses don't even know that if you hire someone who's a veteran, who's someone who's an ex-felon, you can get a significant tax break, right? No one ever tells people that. And so you don't have the understanding that like you can say, I think it's, um, maybe I shouldn't say the number, it's, it's high, it's in the thousands, right? That you can get per employee um, when you have, um, when someone brings to your attention the work opportunity tax credit. Okay, so having a dedicated representative 
um, like the ones that were contracted with with the Heartland, uh, they would look to that and any other opportunities you have for tax credit. So it's a very robust, when I say robust, you have the option to have your own HR department assigned to your employees. The required employee handbooks are created by them, provided to your employees. They handle all of your HR and take the liability off the business owner so that you can focus on your business. So, so again, yes, we also offer um, through a company called FinSeq, uh, software like QuickBooks, right? They also they also have their own payroll system and funds robust. They offer ACH payments, which are external transfers, right? Mm -hmm. um, they offer um, like a, a, a program similar to QuickBooks that uh, is very effective and useful, and it's extremely cheap. So, um, and that's one of the that's one of the things that we run into with a lot of our businesses is they're just like, I just want to go out and do my job. You know, I I I put all my receipts in a box. <laughs> You know, and this is where I keep all my stuff and then maybe every six months I'll go in and enter it into a system so I can track what I'm doing. And and we're just like, um, you need to hire a bookkeeper. <laughs> you need somebody to be able to yeah. keep track of this. And so, you know, um, you know, oh, I just go take cash out of my check, my cash register when I need money to pay my bills. And, and it's like, no, you have to have a system in place in order to be able to tell the story of your business. The other piece to that is when you get to the point where you want to sell your business, if you can't show accurate books or, you know, where your uh, income and your expenses and whether or not you're making a profit, your business isn't going to be worth anything, you know? And so there's all these things that a lot of times people don't think about. And it's something that needs to be set up from almost from day one. That if they, they don't have those things or they don't know where the resources are where they could go, yeah. you know. So that's that's great that um, I did not know that your guys' business offered that as a yeah. service because we, you know, we get asked all the time, you know, we need a bookkeeper. Where do we go? And so we have a list of bookkeepers, but a lot of those bookkeepers are completely full and they cannot take any any more people. Yeah. So it's we're always looking for different places to to refer and, and that's a, a great and, and a lot of people too who um are point of sale, you know, they don't know where to go, where's the best resource to get their little cube or the little um you know or how do I yeah the square or how do I add it to my website. So you know especially during COVID that was a huge thing especially for our restaurant industry where people were um, making orders over the phone and then they wouldn't show up to pick up their orders. And so the business was out. So if they had it on their website, they did online order, they make their payment and they don't show up, at least they still got paid for the food. And so that was something that we were really trying to help small businesses um, get through. Um, Monica, I know that you have been online listening. Um, do you have any questions? I know we talked about a lot of different things, but I, I know that you're a new business startup. And is there anything that you, any specific questions that you have for Dominic that he can answer? Yeah, thank you. This all has been really helpful. Um, I don't really know too much at all about business banking or financing. So this helped me to know um, what even to ask, like, you don't know what you don't know, kind of a thing. Um, but I do have a question about, let me look through my notes. Um, you mentioned a USDA loan. Um, what, what did you call that? I'm starting a lavender business. So it's agricultural. And I'm wondering if that might, if I might qualify for that. Yeah, for sure. We don't offer those loans specifically. Um, that's just an option that you can go to. But, you know, if you went to the USDA website, it's a government website, um, and you went to, I think there's a specific tab that says uh, agriculture startups. Um, there's a ton of information. That's where I would start. I think that they would, uh, there's going to have, there's going to be some contact information on there where you can ask them the question as far as who's eligible for funding. And you might find uh, they offer grants. Um, and that's something you're not having to pay back, but then they also, you know, it, it's, they're very interested in the promotion and the success of agricultural enterprises. And so I would definitely go to their website and uh, perhaps you could see. Yeah, bit I, I'll email you some information. We work with USDA as well as um, the um, WSDA as well, um, Washington State Department of Agriculture. They also have some different programs that are available for farmers. Wow, that would yeah. be wonderful. Thank okay. you. And I, I, I have your email, so I'll forward that information to you after the meeting. 
Thank you very much. Yes. Well, do you have any other questions? I do not. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, the last thing I, I guess the last question that I have for you, if you can share with us any strategies that a small business should use to ensure that they have a successful loan application. Yes, for sure. Um, before I go into that, I just want to yes. say a couple things. One of them is that um, most people are adverse to um, spending money when they're in, in business, right? Uh, because they're trying to make money, right? So um, it, there's no shortage of phone calls, you know, to retail services or merchant services, right? They're just being hammered constantly. Everyone's trying to sell them something. And what it does is it creates this attitude of like, no, I just, I, I don't want it. I'm not interested. And so they don't necessarily do the things that they should do because they feel overwhelmed by, you know, people pushing on from the outside to do something. And so I would say that um, primarily um, get, talk to someone that you can trust, right? Talk to someone that you develop a relationship with. Uh, Leonel and I met through, you know, his business operation. And so I, I believe that he trusts that I am who I say I am mm -hmm. and that we've had plenty of conversations. And so learning to trust somebody and understand that you can take their advice is really key. And, um, and, and understanding the different elements that you can utilize to be successful in business are really important. You have to spend money to make money. You have to be able to see value in certain things. And maybe it's not the exact timing for you. Um, but you shouldn't be adverse to spending money to make your life easier, uh, especially with regards to like accounting or software mm -hmm. upgrades and things like that. The other thing I would say is that um, credit is extremely important in all areas of life. Okay. Um, this is something I just talked to someone the other day who uses his debit card for all his business purchases, and it is just not a good idea to do primarily because there's so much fraud that we encounter. Mm -hmm. Um, if you were to have fraudulent activity on your business debit card, um, it would take up to 30 days for them to resolve that. And this is with any bank. And there's no guarantee that you'll get that money back. Okay. Whereas a credit card and specifically our credit card and others as well, though, um, have zero liability policies where you'll get your money back instantly and then they'll resolve it on the back end. So you always want to make your purchases with a business credit card. Another reason is that most business credit cards, including ours, have rewards that are mm -hmm. built into them. And so you're earning money on every spend. You're going to spend anyways, right? If you don't want to pay interest on the credit card, just pay it off right away with your, with your cash in your account. But what you're doing is you're earning rewards um, that you can utilize for uh, statement credits, travel expenses, merchandise. There's so many different things that you can do. Not only that, credit is everything in this world. Did you know that your insurance premium is mm -hmm. tied to credit, right? And so some people are adverse to credit because they're just like, oh, I don't, I don't do credit, I'm cash, I'm old school. And it's just a faulty way of thinking because, you know, um, statistically speaking, uh, insurance is based on actuarial studies that show that people that maintain personal credit uh, scores, uh, high, high personal credit scores, translate to better drivers. There's always exceptions to that rule, but that's a statistic. Um, if you want to get a job, so when I applied for my role, they ran my credit because it's an indicator of character like we mm -hmm. talked about previously. So the, uh, the understanding of leveraging credit to grow your business uh, shouldn't be avoided by uh, businesses. It should be something that they pursue and understand properly, at least talk to a professional that can help them to navigate through that and be cautious and weary of, you know, how you, uh, what you do to obtain credit and where you obtain credit. So um, that's a little bit thing that I wanted to say with regards to your question specifically, I believe it was what you can do to position yourself for a loan, right? And then again, uh, the conversation piece is going to be critical. Um, you want to talk to your bank. You want to find out who your business professional is, someone who is reliable, someone who potentially can meet with you in person, who can walk you through the different questions that you have. And you'll find that, um, you know, your professional should be able to pose, uh, we do what's known as a needs analysis. A needs analysis will help to discover areas that perhaps you didn't even know that you had a question about, right? You made a comment, Monica, where you said you don't know what you don't know, right? And that's so true. You have no idea what you don't know until you're sitting down with someone and across the table and they're saying, have you considered this 
Have you considered, you know, your future? You know, what's your your plan here? You know, how are you going to pay this? How are you going to grow this? Um, and that's such a critical piece when it comes to, we're known as relationship managers within the bank, right? And it's because it's not just about doing a loan and then being done. We're trying to build relationship. I want to see your business grow and expand and be successful and be the best that it can possibly be. So to answer that question, I would say there's a lot of um, nuance to that, right? Understanding how to prepare your financials, understanding how to grow your credit, understanding, you know, what banks need to see and all these different things, the nuances between the different products that we offer. But I would say primarily what you want to do is talk to somebody who can sit down with you, spend real time pouring over your finances, pouring over your business, your dreams, your hopes, and being able to identify the needs that you might have, be able to be forward looking to see how they might position you to make the most of your company. Does, does that answer the question? Yes. I feel like it's strictly a relationship thing. Yes, I, I, I do. And I think that one of the challenges that we have here in Oak Valley County is a lot of times you go into a local bank and they don't have a banker there. And so it's it's making sure that you call and you make an appointment so that you can go in there when there is somebody there because I think that there's days that we have our, our bankers that are actually our loan officers that come to OMAC or to Brewster or to one of the other areas um, just because we're so rural and people aren't walking in every single day to get those business loans. Yeah. So it's, again, trying to prepare, prepare yourself before you walk in, making sure that somebody's going to be there so that you can make that connection. I think it's super important as well. Um, but I think that that is is definitely, I think this conversation today has helped and I think will help some of the businesses who might not have been able to join us today, but will watch this um, later on, um, either on Facebook or on um, uh, YouTube to be able to help them develop relationships and know where they need to go in order to um, get a loan or understand how they can access capital and how to prepare themselves to do so. So thank you so much. I appreciate you being here today. Um, and thank you, Monica, for joining us and uh, being here. And we hope that you got a lot of information out of the conversation that we had. Um, this was uh, definitely something that I think a lot of businesses continue to ask for is how, how can we um, access capital and what do we need to do to prepare to uh, apply for a loan. So I think I hope hope you got your answers question and I hope those who join us at a later time also be, are, get their answers question. And I appreciate you guys joining us. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. And um, Dominic, do you want to give your information real fast yeah. just in case somebody wants to? Sure, sure. Yeah. Again, uh, Dominic Flores, Wafet Bank. A uh, good contact number for me is 509-771-9444. You can also look me up on the WAFED website. I'm based out of Central Washington. I cover the entire territory between Republic and Cleo. So it's a fairly large territory. So I do a bit of traveling, uh, but I love to do it. And um, I, my email address is Dominic, D-O-M-I-N-I-C dot Flores, F-L-O-R-E-S at WAFED dot com is w a f d it looks like it's going in the chat as well so if anybody Dominic wants to see it, Flores at w a f d dot com there we go yeah the last thing i would say is that i i love to answer questions i love to talk to businesses um, i own a small business myself and 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 so i've been on both sides of it and uh, i if i could even just provide information that's helpful to you um, don't feel pressure. I'm not, I'm not a pressure person. I'm not going to bother you with a hundred phone calls. Um, I, you know, I understand where you're at in business and I want to be a resource for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I will, uh, go ahead and end the call and thank you for joining us.